We're on episode three of how to make t-shirt designs in Illustrator, and we're stepping up our game today. I'm gonna show you guys how to make a cool badge design all in Illustrator. It's gonna be fun, guys, and we're even adding color to our design today, which is something that I don't do very often. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. The truth is, I don't know everything about design, but I definitely try my best to teach you guys as much as I possibly can. So hopefully, in each of these episodes, you guys are learning something new about t-shirt design, merch design in general. But nonetheless, if you guys are enjoying the episodes, I would love to hear your feedback. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the videos. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button because it shows me that you're interested in my videos, and it also helps my videos grow on YouTube. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be breaking this design down step by step. Um, I'm not gonna explain every little detail, but for the most part, you guys are gonna learn how to do everything that I'm doing right here. Now this design does look pretty complicated when you first look at it, right? And I'm sure some of you might be looking at it right now being like, whoa, dude, like what are we gonna do here? This is weird, this is complicated, but it's actually quite simple. A lot of stuff on this design is hiding other stuff, if that makes sense. And I'll give you guys a good example of that. Let me actually click on this and ungroup it. If I ungroup this, you can see, uh, I guess I have to ungroup it again. If I bring that over to the right side, you can see the center circle now, see? So I'm using this piece to hide um, the, the bottom part of this circle so the text can show through. So it's just little stuff like that that really makes this design pop. So it, again, it's very, very easy. There's really nothing to it. Let's go ahead and get started. And we just wanna drag out an ellipse about yay big, about yay big, just like this. And we wanna make sure that ellipse is red. We can keep it red, that's fine. And we're gonna make the stroke, let's try five points, or let's try eight points. We don't want it to be too thick. I think that looks pretty good, so we're gonna keep that as is. We're gonna copy it by selecting it, doing Command C. We're gonna do Shift Command V to paste it, and then we're gonna hold in um, Shift and Command, or sorry, Shift and Option, and resize it. And we're just gonna make it about this big. I zoomed in a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller, and I wanna change the red to a light gray color. Um, so that looks pretty good. It could even be a little lighter, but we're gonna keep it like that for now. Or let's try a little bit lighter. Yeah, I think this shade is pretty good. It's three notches over from the white. And I think that looks pretty good. So we're gonna keep that as is. So now what I wanna do is select everything, group it real quick, and I just wanna make sure everything's centered, and it is, so I can ungroup that again. The next thing we wanna do is add that rectangle at the bottom. Now this part could be a little tricky because it's hard to get it exactly right, but we're gonna keep playing with it until we are happy with what we see. So we're gonna hit M on our keyboard. That's gonna go to our rectangle tool. And once you go to your rectangle tool, just drag out a rectangle about this big. You don't wanna make it too big. Uh, make it about this tall too. We're just gonna let that go. And we wanna make sure it's the same red color. So we're gonna copy that red color using the eyedropper tool. We're gonna get rid of the stroke because we don't want that stroke on it. And then from here, we wanna go up to effect. We wanna go to warp and we wanna add an arc. Okay, and then from here, we just kinda wanna mess with this arc until we uh, get it right. Once you adjust the rectangle and you're happy with it, let's go ahead and go to object and expand appearance. For the text, I'm just gonna use a brand that I buy my jeans from called Goodfellow & Co. Um, again, just for text placement, and that is it. I don't own any rights to this brand or anything like that. So um, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna take the center circle, we're gonna copy it and do Shift Command V again, and it's gonna paste it over it, and we're gonna go to our type on a path tool, which I already am on, and we're gonna type out good, fellow, we want it to be all caps too, good, fellow, and co. And it's gonna look like it's hidden, right? But that's okay, we're gonna fix that in a second here. We're gonna resize the text to about 45, 46. We're gonna change the font to Brothers OT, and we're gonna make it bold, just like this. And now what I wanna do is I wanna take these little text anchor points and make sure this is at the bottom, because that's where we want this text to sit. So I think about right there is fine. The next thing I wanna do is go to character and change the baseline shift so it's um, actually within this rectangle that we have here. I actually don't like how this rectangle is now. It's not big enough for my text. I want my text to be more dominant. Um, even if I take my kerning down, like if I hold an option and hit the left arrow key, I can bring my kerning down, but it's still not big enough in my opinion. I want that text to really be dominant at the bottom. So I'm gonna drag this rectangle up a little bit more um, just so it's bigger. We're gonna center it and we're just gonna keep adjusting it until we're happy. I'm even going to round the corners up here while I'm already doing this. Um, again, this is gonna make a huge difference because now I can go back to my text and resize it and make it even bigger. What I wanna do is redraw out this rectangle because I didn't like the way it looked, so we're going to change it to a different color that we can see really easily. Let's go ahead and do yellow, and we're actually gonna send it to the back, and then what we wanna do is apply that arc again, and we're gonna keep doing this until we find the right shape for this. Um, it just didn't look right, and I didn't think it matched the shape good enough. I guess you can say. So um, I'm definitely going to play with this a little bit more until I find that it looks good. So I'm gonna 
basically bring these edges in because they're a little too wide. I think this looks pretty good so far. Let me see if I can drag it out a little bit more on the left and right side. So I'm kind of matching the shape of this circle, if that makes sense. And that's really all you have to do. And I can go back up to arc and I can change the arc to the other direction. Again, we're just trying to match the shape of that circle. This looks pretty good for now. So I'm going to change the color to that same red. So I'm going to copy that red color, take away the stroke. And now we have a better looking rectangle. Um, it's definitely not perfect, but for this tutorial, I think it looks good. And the next thing I want to do is just round the corners right here because they're a little sharp for me. And then um, once all is said and done, I think this looks pretty good. So we're going to keep it as is. The next thing I did is I took the Goodfellow text and I made it the same gray as the, the center um, circle or ellipse gray. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is add the text on the outside. So what I want to do is copy this ellipse again. We're going to do Command C, Shift Command V, and we're going to add a text path to this now. So we're going to go to our type on a path tool and then just click once on top here and we're going to start typing something out. So, so I wanted to say where style and fit are always in good company. So we're going to go ahead and copy that real quick. So we want to go back to our text and we're going to start typing out where style and fit are always in good company, just like this. And this is actually not the font that I want to use. I want to use another font called classic because it's more of a basic hand drawn looking font. And we're going to change the size of this text too. So again, I'm using these anchor points to center the text. I'm going to take one of them right here on the bottom where this uh, ellipse cuts off the stroke here, just like this. And I want to go to character and I want to change the baseline shift again. So it's centered and then I can change the kerning a little bit. So I'm holding an option, selecting the text and I'm using the right arrow key to go right with the kerning and then the left arrow key to condense it more. So I think this looks pretty good. We're going to keep this as is and we just have it as normal black. So once you have that text, what we're going to do is copy it a few more times. So I'm going to uh, select it, do Command C, Shift Command V. Now that that's copied, I'm going to take the anchor point on the top here and I want to go in the center here just like this. And then we're going to change that baseline shift one more time. So it's uh, sitting at the bottom of the Goodfellow text. And we also want to make sure that uh, font size is also way, way lower than this because it's too big. So we're going to go to like 13 points with it and we do need to recenter this. So I'm going to take my little anchor points right here and recenter it with them. And we're going to go to about right here and then go to about right here with it. So again, we're just centering it one more time. And um, the font's actually a little too small now. So we're going to change the font size real quick. So we're going to go, let's say, let's go to like 18 with it. And we also want to change that kerning. Uh, we want to put quality goods for everyone, just like that. And we're going to resize it again. So it's a little too small. So we want to go up with the font size. Let's go to 25 and then just change the kerning. And the next thing I want to do is I want to start working on the center elements here. So we're going to select this text one more time and we're going to copy it and then do shift command V again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to change the kerning. So we're going to go all the way down with the kerning and we're going to add the inside text real quick. So we're going to do negative 35. We're just going to type out imported for this one. And then I want to left align that just like that. And we're going to take this and just kind of go up a little bit with it. And then we also need to change the size of the font because it's way too big. We're going to go to like 14 with that. And I want to go to the character and change the baseline shift one more time because it's again too, um, too much. So we're going to go about right there and I'm going to just look at it real quick. I think this looks pretty good. I think the baseline shift can be adjusted a little bit more. So we're going to go to about negative 22 or probably even more than that. Let's do negative 26. So I think that looks way, way better. And um, we're going to go ahead and change the kerning too, just so it's a little bit more legible, I guess you can say. And then that looks pretty good. So we're going to copy that one more time and see, we're doing a lot of copying. That's all we're doing. We're copying, we're pasting, we're utilizing that function so we can save time. So command C shift command V just like we did before. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, basically change that to the other side now. So we're going to make sure it's on this other side and this one's going to be a little tricky. So where is it at? See, it's, it's a little weird, not going to lie. So we're going to go about right there with it. At this point, it's probably good to use your ruler. So what I'm going to do is set a ruler down just so I can see where they both should be. And then the next thing I want to do is just take this center graphic from this other design and just drag it over because um, this isn't as important as everything else. So we're just going to make sure that's centered just like this. And we're going to drag it down just a little bit. I also need to resize it because it's way too big. So, and, and then I'm going to recenter it. So that looks much better. Now we're going to go to our shapes and add a star on the very top, just like this. And we're going to actually make this star a little bit more rounded, just like this. So it has a little bit more character and less default, if that makes sense. Um, 
overall, this actually looks really good. There's a couple other things now that I'm looking at it that we could definitely do. Like we could take this star and we can duplicate it a couple times at the bottom here just to give this quality a little bit more style, I guess you can say, and fill up some of the space that was right here because it's a little boring, I guess you can say. So I can take these stars and use them at the bottom here. And I'm just gonna resize these stars because I don't want them to be very big at all. We're just gonna drag this in place. There's definitely a better way to add the stars. What I would probably do is use an ellipse and duplicate it using the ellipse. That way it matches the ellipse shape. But um, for now, this looks pretty good. Now what I wanna do is duplicate it and put it on the other side. So I'm gonna use a reflect tool. I'm gonna find a center point while actually selecting the stars. And um, once I find the center point, I'm gonna hold an option and click. And I wanna copy that. And then we're just gonna look at that real quick and see if it's cool or not. I think this looks pretty cool. I don't know why I didn't do that for the original design. And then we can even change the kerning on this top text, just so it kind of, again, fills up as much space as possible. I think this is looking pretty good. Um, I think the bowl might be able to be a little bit bigger, just a slight bit bigger. So we're gonna select him, make it a little bit bigger, not too much. Center that again. We can even move it down just a tad, just like this. I think this is looking pretty fire. I don't know about you guys. So that's really all there is to it, guys. We're taking these basic shapes. We're doing a bunch of duplicating. We're utilizing the text on a path tool. Um, and again, we're using that star tool to kind of just put the cherry on top. That is how you make a badge design in Illustrator. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the comments section below and also hit the thumbs up button. It helps my videos grow and it shows me you guys are interested. I know you guys are probably sad because episode three is over, but do not worry. I have more episodes coming in this series. And if you guys are enjoying it, make sure you guys are subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. And for those of you following my clothing brand journey, I definitely have more videos coming out. I just don't want to rush the process, so I hope you understand. Um, I have a couple things that I'm working on currently, uh, one of those being designs, and I have a friend of mine named Brandon Stex. You guys can follow him. I'll link him in the description below. He's working on a few designs and he does some really solid work. He's going to be working very closely with the brand. So guys, if you can, please show him love. Blow up his Instagram. Tell him I sent you. I don't want to say too much, so we're going to end this video now. Guys, keep creating, keep being awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Through trippin' Aquafina, I'm sippin' 15, kept a weapon on me Blow make bitches, I'm on my, my business, stack chicken like what it's gon' be Crew in the cut, hey, you want us, red run when I tell a bit peace Love is love